this is Justin from Abstract Data and in this video I will be showing some patch examples using the ADE10 Reactive Shaper as a CV modulation source. The ADE10 is really well suited to working with CV modulation for a number of reasons. Firstly, the inputs and outputs are all DC coupled, so it doesn't matter whether you're using an audio signal or CV or an LFO. Secondly is that the unit is non-frequency dependent. So it doesn't matter whether you're using an oscillator at audio frequencies or at LFO speed, it will handle the input signals in exactly the same way. Third, and I think probably one of the most important features of the ADE10 is this center output is half wave rectified. That means that it's not going to output an AC signal like the full wave output. It will only output the positive going voltages. So you can hear in the background, I've got this nice kind of house groove going. It's all done right here in the modular. The kick drum is the Division 6 Filtar SE3. The claps and the hi-hats are the white and the colored noise outputs of a Derpfer A118 noise generator. I'm using a Derpfer A121 multi-mode filter, the high-pass output to filter the claps, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to be using the ADE10 to do two things. Firstly, it's going to be acting as an envelope generator. And secondly, it's going to be acting as a CV modulation source. My input for this patch is the sine wave output of a Derpfer A147 LFO. You can see that I've got two CV modulation sources here. Source 1, which is shaping, and source 3, which is feedback. I'm not using the folding stage in this patch. The modulation input for the first stage, the shaping stage, is the triangle output of the same A147 LFO that I'm using as my input. The input for the third CV modulation stage is the ramp output of the A147 LFO. For the sound generation of this patch, I'm using two VCOs, the Derpfer A111 VCO2 and the Tiptop Audio Z3000. I'm using the pulse output of both VCOs. I've got one VCO slightly detuned against the other, so we've got some nice phasing and a little bit of beating going on. I'm summing both of the outputs in a Derpfer A138 mixer, which is just up here off camera. The output of the Derpfer A138 mixer is running straight down here into an IntelliGel hex VCA. The ADE10 is doing two things. I'm using a single sine wave input and I'm splitting it into two outputs, two simultaneous outputs. One is half wave rectified, which is driving the IntelliGel hex VCA, and the other is full wave rectified, which is acting as a pulse width modulation source for the Tiptop Z3000 VCO. Just two effects, the Akai head rush and the Digiverb digital reverb. So let's have a listen to just the backing beat. And remember, this is all coming out of the modular. Let's listen to this lead line and the backing groove. For the second patch, you'll see that I've got a second ADE10 rigged up here. I'm taking the ADSR that was originally running the filter kick. The input for the ADE10, the second ADE10, is coming from a Derpfer A140 ADSR down here, and that was originally plugged into the CV input of the Filtar SE3. You can see that once again I'm using the half wave rectified output from the ADE10. With this patch, I'm actually just going to use the folding stage. The other thing you'll notice is that I'm cheating a little bit. I said that this was going to be all about CV modulation. The input, the CV modulation input for the wave folding stage is actually coming from an audio output of the VCO that I'm using as part of my first patch. Now, just to refresh your memory, this is what the original sine wave filter kick sounded like. All I'm doing is modulating the ADSR using one stage of the ADE10. It's a really simple patch, but you'll hear the difference that it makes. <laughs> 